privilege isn't Beto O'Rourke's only problem. There's also his taste in art. As a teenager, he went by the hacker nickname Psychedelic Warlord. Has he dropped acid? That is actually a good question to ask Beto, and I hope somebody will. Whether he was doing that or not, he did write a poem about cows. Now, to be clear, Beto is a poet. He's an artist, and we don't want to be disrespectful to his art, so we're not going to boulderize this. We're just going to read his words. And again, these are his, not ours. We would not add capital letters to an E.E. E. Cummings poem, and we're not going to change Beto's poem, but it's a little vulgar, so if you don't want to hear it, close your ears. Here it is. I need a butt shine. Right now you are holy, O sacred cow. I thirst for you. Provide milk. Buff my balls. Love the cow. Good fortune for those that do. Love me. Breathe my feet. The cow has risen. End quote. Author and columnist Mark Stein, struggling mightily to keep a straight face, joins us tonight. <laughs> Mark, how would you, how would, how would you rate uh, Beto O'Rourke's poetry on a scale of one oh. to horrifying? <laughs> oh, come on, we're in uh, Keats and Shelley territory here. I love the uh, rhyme. I love the meter. I, I love the poetic uh, sentiment about uh, buffing uh, whatever particular aspect of Beto it was. Uh, personally, I'd be privileged to buff any part of Beto, but this cow uh, oh, is too. being invited to buff the essence of Beto. Uh, and that in itself is a beautiful poetic sentiment. And I, I love Nate Lerner, too. And I have to say, I thought that was absolutely delightful to say that a, a diversity and identity means we have to put up lots of black and gay and Muslim and transgender candidates so they can lose to the rich white guy. Uh, that, that seemed to be <laughs> Nate's rationale. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the rich, the, but the rich really, white what guy... What I love about it is that's what they really think. That's what they think. No, that, that's actually the plan. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, 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 the and the thing about it is I don't believe in the concept of white privilege, but these guys do. And actually, it's hard to get any more white privileged uh, than a judge's boarding school son who's writing bovine poetry of the kind you just quoted uh, and, is, and is the world's most dedicated middle-aged skateboarder. You mentioned the other night, uh, Tucker, that they were all hailing him as the new rock star. And in our insane world, uh, the, when it comes to political candidates, it seems to me you're either the new boy band or the new Hitler. Increasingly, there's nothing in between. So if you're Trump, That's you're the right. new Hitler... And Beto is the, bay, the boy band du jour. And, of course, all boy bands are du jour. But there's, uh, there's something slightly pathetic uh, in, being, in, in, being, in a, being a political boy band when you're pushing 50 and still skateboarding around like the, uh, the, rich, the rich white kid uh, doing bovine poetry back when, when you were getting uh, picked up on DWI and burglary charges. This, this is actually a parody of rich white privilege. I would like to apply the standards of identity politics to the people who espouse them. And if I could pass one law, it would be that. You would not be allowed yes. to nominate Beto O'Rourke in the Democratic Party because it's contrary to what you say you believe. Absolutely. And if he was the he if he had an R after his name, he would be George W. Bush. He would be the the, the rich white kid. Uh, from Texas okay. with uh, the DWI charge. Uh, all, that, all that is different Such is that he's point. got a D after his name instead of an R. That is so smart. I, I hadn't even thought of that. That's, that's why I love having you, Mark Stein. You always think of it. Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks a lot, Tucker. Great to be with you.